Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the two to four player game Roller Ghoster, designed by Roberta Fraga, which is the latest Dry Magier title from Schmidt Spiele, who helped sponsor this video. The annual ghost race to the top of the old ruins is starting and you're ready to join in, but be careful because there are dangerous magic boulders that will try to knock you off the path. With some smart moves and maybe a little luck, you might be the first ghost to the top. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, place this game board right into the box itself like this, and then insert these two castle walls into the slots for them here within that board. This will form the base of the ruins, so it looks something like this when you're done. Now find the two slots on each side of these walls and insert these staircase pieces into them. Just keep going around the tower and inserting them as you go, and when you're done, it will look something like this. Basically just one continuous staircase that wraps all the way around the tower. Now find this tower piece in what is known as the target field. Flip this piece over and look for the three holes and then place these three pegs into it so that it's attached like this. Then you can flip the whole unit face up. Now find these four cardboard battlement pieces and you'll place one of them into each of the slots that go all the way around the outside of this piece. This will put battlements on each edge so that it looks something like this when you're done. You then place this onto the top of the structure, but rotated so that this target field is lined up with the top of the staircase. Then find these three boulders and drop them into the opening here at the top of the tower. Each person now picks a ghost to control in their chosen color and sets them in this start area just beside the lowest staircase. And we'll assume we have three players in this game, so we've set out three ghosts. Now the youngest player is given the die and will start the game, or you can just choose someone randomly. And that's the setup. In Roller Ghoster, players will be rolling the die and choosing their paths as they race up the tower, trying to get to the final topmost space of the track while avoiding the boulders that will try to knock the ghosts off the path. The game is played over a series of turns, starting with the first player who will roll the die. They now resolve the symbol it shows. If you roll the one, a two, or a three, you move your ghost that number of spaces. Let's say we roll the two. At the beginning of the game, you'll leave the start area, counting the first space as the step here. Anytime you enter a space with a star, you can either next move the safe way along the castle wall, or take the shorter, more dangerous way along this outer path. As we'll see, balls can drop from the top of the tower, and while they may be able to hit a ghost that's on one of the outer paths, they can never hit one that is on an inner path. But we'll see how that works a little later. When moving, you also count any space filled by another ghost. So if I was here and I rolled a three and I wanted to follow the inside path, I would count it as one, two, three. Now, if your roll would cause you to end your move on top of another ghost space, so let's say I counted three, but I went along the outside path, then instead you move your ghost to the next free space ahead of the space that's filled in. So counting three, I would go one, two, three, and then advance to the next open space following this dotted line of the outer path. If you ever end your move directly on what is known as the rotten step, which has this crack in it, you immediately slip and follow this red arrow onto this space of the outer track here. Now let's just reset things quickly and assume that the ghosts were like this. Now, if I end my move on the crack and would slip back onto this space and it's already occupied, then you move on to the next lower space, which in this case would be here. Let's reset this one more time, but have this purple ghost be on the very first space. Now, when we advance onto the rotten step and fall back, because this space is full, we fall back again. And because this space is full, we also fall back. But if falling back would cause you to go past the very first space, then you just set your ghost in the starting area. Okay, so that's what happens if you roll a one, two, or a three. But if you roll a one, or this two that shows an arrow, you still move your ghost following the usual rules, but then after, you turn the tower here at the top one click to the right. This will cause up to three of the balls in the tower to roll out. 
So let's give this a try. Any ghosts who are on the outer tracks that get hit will be knocked into one of the pits in the corners as we just saw. And they'll stay in that pit until the start of their next turn. Also, if a boulder ever hits a ghost and then knocks it off the board entirely, just drop it into the closest pit. Or if a ghost is knocked over, but it stays put on the track, like let's say it was laying like this, it's still considered knocked over and you drop it into the closest pit. But remember, ghosts on spaces of the inner track cannot be knocked over by boulders. If one is accidentally knocked over by another ghost or by even a falling boulder, then after it's been knocked, just pick it back up and put it where it was. Either way, once the balls have fallen, collect them all from wherever they are and then drop them all back into the top of the tower. If you're in one of the pits at the start of your turn, roll the die as normal and when you move, first place your ghost on the corner space above the pit it had fallen into, counting that as your first step. Now if that space is already full, just count it like you do in any other filled space situation, remembering that this space is a star space, so that means as you move from here, you can either go on the inner track or onto the outer path. The last side you'll find on the die shows a ghost. And when this is rolled, instead of moving your own ghost, you move another player's ghost one space as you like, following the normal rules. After a player has taken their turn, the next player in clockwise order takes their turn rolling the die, and turns will continue like this until eventually a ghost makes it to this final target space, which requires moving from this space to here. Though I should point out, this space is considered unsafe. In other words, if a ball hits it from this position, the ghost will be knocked into one of the pits. If a player makes it safely to this space, they win. And they don't have to land here exactly. Any extra steps they might have rolled are just ignored. The game can end at this point, or the players can agree to keep playing to see who comes in second, third, or fourth. But otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Roller Ghoster. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the game's page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.